Sketch Plus is like the Swiss Army Knife extension for SketchUp. It's pretty much the missing tool set that you wish you had. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through every single tool really quickly so you can see exactly what's included in Sketch Plus. All right, so Sketch Plus comes with six categories of tools. Components, draw, tags, materials, move, and select. So let's explore the components tools. So the first one here is the Sketch Plus component finder, which you may think is similar to the built-in components panel in SketchUp, but the biggest difference is you can search by name. So if you may not be aware, the search feature in the components panel actually searches the, um, the 3D warehouse. It doesn't search the current, like the in-model collection of components. So if you're trying to find a component that's in your model, you'd have to basically just go to, go to the list and like search for it uh, by browsing and scrolling up and down to, finding, to find it. But with this component finder, feature, you can actually search by name, and then when you find the component you want, you can click on it and place it in your model just like that. So the next tool is the change axis tool. So this will allow you to position the axis at any one of these predefined points uh, in relation to the bounding box of a component. Next, we have the Replace Component tool. So I can select this component and replace it with this component. You can also replace multiple components at once by creating a multi-selection and then using the tool. Now keep in mind, the component that is being replaced will keep the same axis orientation. So if the axis is located somewhere weird like this, it will if I use the replace tool, it'll kind of orient the uh, component kind of strange because it's keeping the axis orientation where the previous component was. So just keep that in mind if you're replacing things like this, you wanna have a consistent axis orientation. Next we have the mirror tool, which will allow you to mirror components or groups along the specified plane. So if I snap to the green uh, plane here and click at the midpoint, it'll mirror across to the other side. And then I can grab these two, grab the mirror tool again, snap to the red axis, and do the same thing to the other side. With Smart Array, this is really cool because it's, it's very intuitive. So you select two components that have been you know, oriented differently from one another. So you select the first one, you select the second one, and then you can see it kind of will copy additional components based off of the transformation of the first two. And so you can use this, obviously the most obvious uh, application is for making stairs, spiral stairs, or anything that has a, a certain transformation as it is being copied. All right, check out this path array tool. You select a path, activate the tool. You're gonna to click a start point for the path, select a component, and then you can array the component along the path. Hitting shift will toggle whether the component will rotate along the path. And then you just click to finish. You can also type in a fixed distance if you want. So that's a really awesome tool. All right, let's say you have a bunch of copies of the same exact tree in the model. Just select all of them, click the random spin, and when you click, it will rotate the components randomly so you have a little bit of uh, differences between all of the trees. And there's also a randomized scale button. So it kind of does the same thing, just with the scale. So this is a great way to get away with using the same component 
for multiple objects. Um, it's kind of a dead giveaway when you have all the trees looking the exact same. So randomizing the scale and rotation uh, really gives it the illusion that these are different components. And the last randomizer is a random position tool. So you create a selection of multiple objects, activate the randomized position. Then what you're gonna do is click and then you're going to specify the range of randomness that you're going to allow. So let's say in the red direction, I want a maximum uh, random movement of this much, and then the maximum along the green axis will be wider, so I'll go like this. And then for the height, I actually don't wanna change the height at all, so I'm going to make sure this stays collapsed, and I'll click to finish. And it's now randomized the green and red position along the green and red axis within the parameters within this, this box um, range that I've defined. So it's a really clever user interface to allow you to randomize the position of multiple objects. All right, next we have recursive explode. So if you've ever imported an IFC file, you know how many nested objects there are and what's great is with this one tool, you can explode all of those and be left with just the raw geometry. So all the, the nested objects will be instantly erased. All right, so next we have the drawing tools. Now these are a number of different tools for creating primitive shapes. The first one is a sphere. So before you click, you can define the number of segments and then you click, you drag the mouse, click again, and you have a sphere. You can also define the radius. We also have the cone tool, again, defining the segments first, dragging for the diameter and then the height. And then we have the torus. So you do the radius and then the thickness of the torus. Sometimes you might have a situation where you've done something to break the faces in the model and you might typically grab the line tool and like retrace the face uh, or retrace the edge in order to regenerate the faces. But then you have a situation where sometimes interfaces are not um, kind of subdivided. So then you have to do the same thing and like subdivide that and then come over here and uh, retrace this edge to subdivide that. But now with the with this tool right here, make faces, what you can do is just select all of the geometry here, grab the tool, click one of the edges, and it'll instantly regenerate all of the possible faces that can be created with the selected edges. So that's a really handy tool as well. All right, next we have some tag tools. So the first one will untag all of the selected entities. And the cool thing is when you activate the tool, SketchUp will switch into color by tag mode. And if you have the entity info and outliner open, as you hover over the different objects, it will kind of temporarily select it so you can see which tag it's assigned to. You can see exactly what you're highlighting. So then you just click. So right now this is on the cabinet's wall tag. If I click, now it removes it and it's untagged. So I can do the same thing here. So we get the visual feedback with the color by tag and we can see uh, what we're doing in the entity info and outliner. The next one will untag just the faces and edges. So most of you know that it's best practice to keep all of your faces and edges on the untagged layer or tag rather. <laughs> Uh, still have that issue. I still say layer sometimes. Um, so this is a great way to go through the model and just completely uh, remove faces from any sort of tag and just keep those on untagged. And then this last one here will untag all groups and components uh, within the selected entity. So I could remove tags from literally everything in the, com in the model uh, just like that. And then when you activate a new tool, color by tag turns off and you're good to go. Next, we have some material tools. 
the first one is kind of neat. It's a deep paint faces. So if I wanted to paint the side of this cabinet a wood color, I can use deep paint faces, click on just the face without having to actually open the uh, component and you can uh, paint that face. So this one, uh, these are actually two separate components, I believe. So that's why, yeah, that's why both of them appeared painted <laughs> when I orbited around. And then we have some similar um, tools like with the tag tools. So we can do unpaint all, unpaint faces and edges. So I can go like this and remove that material from the face and then unpaint all groups and components. So if there's any paint applied directly to a group or component. So this group has a paint applied to it. I can use that and it will uh, go back to the default material. All right, next we have the move tools. And this first one is called the nudge tool. So this, you can just use your arrow keys to nudge a selection um, by a specified increment. So you can type in an increment here. So I could type in uh, one foot and every time I tap the arrow key, it'll nudge one foot. Next we have move to origin. This one's pretty obvious. You click on it and the object is moved to the current origin. All right, this next tool is the align tool. So if you have multiple objects, you create a selection, grab the align tool and you get this really cool interface that gives you instant feedback. So you can align multiple objects um, along the red, green, or blue axis. So I can drop these all to the ground. And then if I wanna bring them all towards the green axis, we have the perfect alignment. I'd say this is one of my favorite tools just because of how intuitive it is. The, the instant feedback that it provides, I think is really, really awesome. And this tool is an instant move to Z uh, tool. So with a selection, move to Z, and all of those objects are instantly brought to the same uh, Z position that you pick in the model. So the next command is the drop command. So you create a selection of objects, grab the drop tool, click, and the components or objects will drop down until it intersects with a surface below. And lastly, in the move tools is the flatten to ground. So if I select this uh, mesh here and click the flatten to ground and click, it'll flatten it all the way down to the origin Z so it's completely flat. And lastly, we have the select tools. So this first one is a select filter. So with the current selection, you can select only the faces, for instance. So you click select only and it selects the faces. If I create a selection again, let's say I only wanna select the groups. It erases all of the selection because these are, these are components. So I could say components, select only. And so now I've only got the components selected. You can do the opposite. You can deselect. So if I want to deselect the faces, I can select faces there, click deselect, and now I'm left with everything else. So there's a lot of different options here. You can select by uh, groups, components, whether they're solid, non-solid, images, text, dimensions, all of these things here. You can select by material. Uh, it's, it's a really powerful, this is another one of the tools that I found myself using quite a bit once I had Sketch Plus installed. So I would have to say this is one of my favorite features as well. There's also a lasso tool selection. So you can create a selection using a lasso instead of using like the standard box selection that comes with SketchUp. This lasso allows you to create a custom shape selection just like that. And similarly is the polygon lasso. So this is uh, where you can just click and create a polygon to create your selection like that. 
Now, deep select face is really cool if you have really complicated models that have a ton of nested objects because with a single click, it'll open up all of the nested objects and get down to the very uh, base object that face uh, exists in. So it's a great fast way to um, select and open groups and components that are in your model. And we also have the selection painter where you can select objects by clicking and dragging across them. So actually let's jump inside of here and do that again. So click and drag to create a selection across multiple objects. All right, and next we have the select all instances tool where you click on one component and it'll select every single copy of that component that is within the current context. So then I can go ahead and grab my paint bucket tool and paint all instances of that component in one step. And lastly, we have a uh, previous selection, kind of like a, a memory of the different things that you've selected. So I can click this button and bring back the previous selection that I just had. All right, so that is the entire Sketch Plus tool set from the component tools, the draw tools, tags, materials, move, and the selection tools. So it's a great tool set. Uh, it's kind of like the, like I said, it's a Swiss army knife of SketchUp extensions. It's the tools that you wish you had. If you'd like to check it out, I have an affiliate link in the description and that is gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.